you know, before we get into the trash survey, there's, there's a number of things that are going on uh, regarding the, the trash survey, uh, trash contracts that are coming up. Uh, that's tied into a lot of what we were you know, talking about tonight. But just very briefly, I just wanted to run through a few things. As the council mentioned, uh, we're going into our third year of the expanded post assistance program. We start March 1st. However, again, uh, common sense for rule of the day. Uh, we'll be sending inspectors out. We're going to try to gauge in the north end uh, as far as whether it makes any sense to get a sweeper out there. Uh, typically, what we look for in the winter uh, is, as far as street sweeping goes, if we can get to 80% of the curb, then usually we we go with it. Uh, I left some flyers, actually some of the older ones, uh, for notices for uh, posted street sweeping. But again, is I encourage you to sign up electronically through cityofboston.gov with a no tow program, that you'll get an electronic reminder about the posted street sweeping schedule and also about cancellations uh, the day before. So if we look at a forecast and we say, okay, we have two inches of snow, we're not going to run the sweeper. If there's mounds of snow and we can't get to, you know, we can't get to at least 80% of the curb, we're going to cancel it. You know, we're looking at possible another event tomorrow night. Uh, you know, a couple of benches, we're also looking at another possible event on Friday night. So I don't think Mother Nature is quite finished with us as far as this painting goes, but again, if, and if you're not engaged electronically, call the mayor's hotline, 617-635-4500, and they'll be able to, street sweeping's on, street sweeping's off. So that is your bottom line sort of catch-all. Uh, the North End, we started with, with you three years ago. Uh, last year, we implemented the South End, the same thing, 10 months, and now Beacon Hill, begins uh, next week. This is their first year in doing it. So uh, I think ultimately we'd like to get to that citywide. Again, it's, a lot of it is all about the money. Uh, we're doing those three neighborhoods that I mentioned with the city forces and not with the contractor. Once we start getting into more neighborhoods, then we're going to start talking about more money. So again, just a heads up on the snow. Uh, posted street sweeping requests. Uh, over what the last five, six, seven years, we've implemented, uh, we've really expanded the posted street sweeping program in the North End. I know there's all there'll always be disagreements about well, we should have hand people up there doing it instead of moving cars. But we can go around and around in that discussion. But the bottom line is, we'd love to have an army of people come up and you know get underneath the cars and all of that. The bottom line is the most effective manner in which for us to clean the streets is with mechanical and supplemented with hokies uh, in some particular areas, but most of these mechanical streets we think. There's a, there was a total of uh, six streets that the Clean Streets Committee has asked to include, and this is we're now going on for three years. This will finish off the north end as far as close to the streets we can go. Battle Street, Clark, Frost, Garden Court, Moon, and Stillman. Uh, so we're, we wanted to get those posted for March 1st. Uh, unfortunately, Mother Nature got in the way and we really got backed up in all of our sort of day to day operations uh, and we're focused on snow. So we'll be doing outreach with flyers and that type of thing and, uh, you know, extensively. And we'll be looking at April for us for the posting of those streets. So those streets, just those streets, will crank up for April for us, uh, and that will complete the north end uh, as far as posted sweep. Just on the resurfacing, real quickly, the council mentioned Salem Street. We've also got scheduled for this year a commercial north, uh, Lewis and Richmond. Uh, the servicing means the street, not the sidewalk, correct? Right? That that'll be the that'll be the roadway. And also, that will be the uh, the ramps, all of the peg ramps, and also any sidewalks that we see that need to be picked up, we'll, we'll pick those up. So uh, that's what we have planned. This list uh, may very possibly expand, but that's what we have sort of in the back pocket for leading into the spring of this year. Uh, and now to, to get into the uh, you know the, the survey and the, the trash contracts. 
the, the North End has been very, very clear about uh, a number of things that they would like to, to see. Uh, and also, there's, you also have other neighborhoods that are also have three pickups a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, uh, Bay Village, Beacon Hill, and Chinatown. Uh, Beacon Hill and Bay Village are, uh, they're sort of, they're struggling with the same issue that, that you have. In essence, as we've already discussed, three trash pickups a week and one recycling, so trash in essence is sitting out there for possibly six, six days a week, if not more. Uh, one of the things we had a memorable meeting here a couple of years ago, I think, uh, Councilor, if I remember, uh, where we were looking, we proposed to uh, reduce the hours of the trash placement. So instead of putting it up at 5 o'clock the night before, you couldn't put it out till I think we 12 or 1 a.m. on the day of collection. Well, the neighborhood spoke very clearly that that was unacceptable. The only way that it might be palatable is if the trash collection, the actual trash collection, instead of starting at 7 a.m., started at 9. So the public works department would say to Capital Lakes, you can't go into the North End until 9 o'clock. And then that would be, okay, maybe we'll agree to that. Uh, <laughs> the problem is, is that sort of everybody wants that. Uh, Beacon Hill has been asking for the same thing for several years. Uh, and again, everybody's working to try to reduce the amount of time this trash and recycling is sitting out there. Uh, you know, particularly, you know, I don't have to tell you, you live in the neighborhood, you're walking around at 7 o'clock, it's a beautiful evening, and you're stumbling over trash that's been put out on all the sidewalks. So, never mind all the litter and the rodents and just the general environment uh, that it neg negatively impacts. So, the uh, Commissioner Massaro, my boss, uh, it has been basically listening to neighborhoods and what they'd like to see. Our, our trash contracts, the new ones go into to effect in June of 2014. So this is the first time we've really been able to, you know, to, to really look at this and to see if there's things that we can change. Now, again, everybody, you know, wants their trash picked up. Well, I want it picked up between 9 and 12 and that'll be great. Everything works out fine. However, it's not that simple. It's, you know, you're not the only neighborhood that's get, getting collected on that specific day. There's other neighborhoods that are also being collected. So it's almost, it's, there's a lot of moving parts to it, but it's, it's a ripple effect. You change it in one location, and it's going to impact another location. So we have our contracts in place right now. And, you know, the one thing I will say is, is you know, you want to go back 10, 15, 20 years. There was a lot of competition to become a, a waste hauler in the city of Boston. You know, BFI, waste management, you had all of those. Uh, it's not quite, that's not the way it is now. Uh, some of the larger companies, the BFIs and the waste managements, they're not interested in uh, working with the city of Boston as far as trash and recycling collection. So our number of bidders, you now if you go into the private sector, uh, and you're getting commercial trash, well, you've got, you, you've got a myriad of people to select from. However, the people who are bidding on our contracts is shrinking. So we know what happens when there's less competition. Uh, your, you know, your prices are going to be going down significantly. So uh, that's one of the other aspects that, that comes into play with it. The, uh, the one thing that you know, the city of Boston really wants to do as far as residential collection goes is we're, we're always looking for ways to improve recycling. Uh, you know, John McCarthy, a friend of ours from recycling, has always said that he could walk into anybody's household and a minimum of 75% of that trash could be recycled. Uh, so it's, uh, we want to continue to encourage that. It's been difficult in some neighborhoods, and again, it's, you know, there's, there's storage issues, uh, whereas, the, you know, some of those neighborhoods that I mentioned, including yours, where the basement used to be, you know, the storage facility for barrels and that type of thing. Well, it's a garden pattern now. So there's, you know, the space in which to contain this uh, has been constricted. Uh, and that's one of the things the North End has always been very, you know, has always voiced very strongly is that there's a lack of room in which to uh, 
store trash or prop, proper containers, which is basically a barrel with a lid on. Uh, the one of so the public works department is really looking at different ways that we can do it. I mean, they may, uh, and again, we'll be sort of having more of these discussions with the neighborhoods as we get closer to it. But it's where we've heard loud and clear about from the neighborhoods as far as some of the different things they would like to see. Uh, clearly, again, the North End and other neighborhoods, it's, can you move that 7 a.m.? You know, move that back a little so you can give us some wiggle room to put out our trash before we go to work or whatever the case may be. And we don't have to put it out the night before. Um, we'll, we'll be looking, again, it's all, it's all about the money. Uh, we'll be looking to increase the number of recycling days. So particularly with neighborhoods who have two and three trash collections, we'd be looking at adding a second recycling bin. Uh, now again, if you just do the math, if you've got, you know, right now we refer to it as three plus one, three trash, one recycling. So if you go to three plus two, well, the cost is going to go up. Uh, so those are things we're looking at. Beacon Hill, uh, Big Village have been uh, very receptive to the idea uh, of going to two plus two, to recycling days, to trash days, instead of three plus one. Uh, the North End, my guess is that there'd be some resistance to that. Uh, I, I, my, my sense in the North End is the North End doesn't want to give up that third day of trash collection. Because again, there's no place to put it, and what are we going to do with it? Uh, I have my own personal opinion on that, but in our voice before is, you know, I don't, it's, uh, you know, I, I don't see why anybody in the city of Boston needs to get their trash collected three times a week. Uh, however, however, do you do the most? I don't want trash collected. Yeah, but it's more of an urban, I mean, it's a suburban type of neighborhood, but, you know, this is very tight looking. If the issue is, I, 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 I don't see it. Issue, you, just, you just said it, it's a resistance to it for those three, to keep those three days for the issue. That you're keeping your garbage at home, you're leaving with your garbage. Yeah. Everybody wants to leave with their garbage. And also, if that means the cost of that, right? If you oh. talk about your cost goes up, our cost goes up too. Our uh, taxes have gone up. So I have cost goes up, and we know, but, but that's it's the same argument. Our cost goes up too. Our cost goes up, and we don't get any better service. Okay. What do you mean your cost goes up? We pay more taxes. We pay more, we pay more property taxes. We pay much higher property taxes today than we paid four years ago. So our cost is also going up. I mean, that's what. Taxes Again, it's, you know, I've heard from the North End on numerous occasions that why can't you just have hire more people? Put more litter barrels up. You know, do this. The fact of the matter is, is that we have a budget that we're working with, uh, and we have to stay within that budget. It's, it's, it is what it is. So we would, the, the city, the, the public works about would love to have, okay, 20 Hokies, you know, men and women with their arms and shovels, 20 Hokies a day, go into the North End. We would love to do that. It's not going to happen, at least the, the way in, in this current fiscal climate. It's just not going to happen. So again, we, you know, we, we're looking for solutions, working with you, to try to see if we can get to it. We're looking, you know. You know we have budgets, too. Yeah, we need to, like, keep, keep, keep our costs under control. And we're paying for services that we're not yeah, getting. Yeah. Right. And so, I mean, like, as, as citizens, someone who lives in this neighborhood pays enormous tax dollars on property that, you know, expect certain services like three pickups a week and one recycler at a minimum and proper care of, of the garbage when it's being picked up. Yeah, I, I demand that. Yes, I want that. We have people that live in 400 square feet. The reason that they need to throw their garbage out is because they live in 400 square feet. Well, how, how much of trash does, so how many people are living it's within not, this point? It doesn't matter. It's really none of anybody's business but how much that's, trash that's, that people produce. It's that they're producing it, and, and it's the city's job to pick it up. That's, that's, my, that's my personal opinion. So again, you're getting trash collected three times a week. But again, it's, it's, there's a direct correlation from the amount of time the trash is sitting in curbside and recycling into the cleanliness of the neighborhood. There's, there's, you can't escape that fact. 
I have two brief things to say. <clears throat> Number one, and this is not pitting the North End versus any other downtown neighborhood, even if it comes across this way. I'm going to make that very clear. It's very, I don't know if the word's embarrassing, it's very frustrating to say at the very least, to see two guys on a Friday night that are city ambassadors, and I see them around downtown crossing, usually on Washington Street. But these guys were actually sweeping, uh, wearing their green uniforms on a Friday night at about 8, 8.30 p.m. And they were actually right around the corner from there, right off the of school street, right in front of the Omni Parker House Hotel. And I remember saying, like, is there any way you guys can come into the North End? He said, no, we just work around here. And I've actually seen those very same ambassadors with the green flap jackets, or flap jackets, sweeping around Washington Street. And I know that that's, they're working a lot in that area to build it up and the big hole where filings was, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But to see that, and of course, now that's a commercial district, although they're starting to build high rises. And not to have that in any consistent fashion in our neighborhood in particular, where it's such a big issue. So that's one thought. Number two, just in case, thinking ahead and maybe being realistic, even if it's not what we want to happen ultimately, just in case we are not able to change the time that we're allowed to put the trash out so that we can put it out in the morning, I had a conversation with a guy from ISD. He was sitting in his car monitoring the Haymarket area about a month ago on a Saturday. And he was the one that made me aware of the fact that the South End is starting a limited pilot program on March 1st for four whole months, covering not all of the South End, of course, but Tremont Street, Harrison Ave, and Mass Ave. And trash and recyclables are allowed to be put outside starting at 11 p.m. the night before. So in case we can't get a new policy that allows the North End residents to start putting out the trash the day of the pickup rather than 5 p.m. the day before. My question is, what are the chances of having a pilot program like that implemented in our neighborhood? If it's being implemented in the South End starting March 1st, is there a possibility it could be implemented in the North End of all neighborhoods in case we can't get the same day trash being placed outside? The, the, the first issue, the, the ambassadors that you saw are part of the downtown bid program. They're not city employees. They're privately paid for by okay. the So all of the all of the companies within the downtown area have chipped in to basically hire those ambassadors and, and there's a whole lot of other programs and marketing that goes along with it. Uh, Can you just quickly? Sure. In regards to the bid in the in, in downtown crossing, Sal has been working and triple trying to work with people in this community to put something along those lines together. The bid is very technical. It's, 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 you know, they, they, they wrote legislation on how the bids would work. Downtown Crossing is the first one in the city of Boston. If you go to Manhattan, there are 50 bids. Um, they're pretty complicated, but Sal's been trying to do some stuff and has met with some people in the community in regards to putting some kind of coalition together or a co-op something along the lines where, you know, people would pay into a 501c3 a membership and, and we could have North End ambassadors. And, right. and they do a whole lot of things on downtown, at downtown Boston. They power wash the streets. They have people walking by with uh, squeegees, cleaning windows. It's uh, it's pretty extensive, but they also raise $1.3 million a year. They have a, a budget of almost a million and a half dollars. So we're trying to do something. Our sales trying to do something along those lines in this neighborhood. There's been discussion. And, Beautification committee that I work with, but we're in the process of getting a 501c3 now, and that's what we'd like to eventually do moving forward. So it's it's been it's, it's I'm glad you mentioned that because I think they they do a great job down there, and they they do more than just sweeping streets. They do a whole lot of stuff down there. They have a team that goes down and checks for the homeless people at night in the winter time. They do all kinds of all kinds of great stuff. I just want to. Excuse me, Mayor, yeah. may I ask a question? Does that reduce the cost of keeping the city clean and for the taxpayers who are going to take more well, money to pay for an additional service, first of all? Okay. The, 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 bids in, the bids in Manhattan, I've spoken to people who run the coalitions or whatever you want to call them in Manhattan. There's the 34th Street Partnership, there's the Flatiron District Partnership, there's a whole bunch, the Grand Central Partnership that I've called. And they, they the, it, it's basically property owners and um, they supplement the city services. So public works would still be, if public works are still involved in downtown crossing, they still show up. When they when they collect the trash, the, um, the ambassadors of downtown crossing, public works still picks it up, and they still do the things that they would typically do in downtown. But the people in downtown crossing wanted to do something that would help supplement 
city service. No, no, I understand, but you know what, yeah, but that's you know that's that's a great thing. But it's also another way to escape the, 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 an, an ongoing issue. The ongoing issue is we're not getting services for the taxes that we're paying for, and now we have to pay for something else. You know, I'm a business owner. You know what I mean? And and, and you know, you want to tell me now that you want to charge me for everything you charge me for? You want to charge me for something else that I have to participate in? Create a system to take care of a problem that I'm already paying for. You know what I mean? And, and, and that's not small at all. But you're not the first. Goal. You're not the first person who said that. People have said, you know, I pay taxes. I should have these services anyways, but. Um, that's, those are, it's not that we pay taxes, we should have those services. We pay taxes for those services. Understood. That's, that's understand that. simple. Some you people, buy the bottle of water. Some people don't have a problem paying, you know, they do it no, but, but, all over Manhattan. But I have a problem paying well. for something twice. It's double taxation. No, I understand. I have a problem paying for something twice. But, but the bid, you don't have to pay for it. If you don't want to participate, you don't participate. I, I have a question. Can I, can can I, have to, if, I, just, I just wanted to get back to the sure. second question. Uh, Jane, is it? Yes. The, uh, regarding the South End pilot program, and I just passed it out if there's any extras. Uh, anyways, the, the, the South End pilot program is, we took a, uh, we took a geographic area within the South End, probably, uh, don't quote me on it, there's maybe eight blocks that are involved in it. And it was one of the, uh, we work, the Public Works Department works closely with a group called the South End Public Works Forum. It's representatives from each business and neighborhood association throughout the South End. Uh, the South End has uh, has been receptive to trying different things, uh, and this was we we had tried this back in 2000, a similar program in Beacon Hill, and now uh, we're we've adapted this to the South End. In essence, what happens is the Public Works Commission, uh, basically, does it by executive order is we take a geographic area in the South End, okay? And we say, within this area, you are no longer allowed to put your trash out or recycling at 5 p.m. the night before. Question. And they get it uh, Tuesdays and Fridays. So you have to, uh, in the ordinance, or not, it's not an ordinance, it's an order, it says that you, you can no longer put it out at 5 p.m. The earliest you can put it out is 11 p.m. the night before. So we're reducing the hours that trash is out there uh, by four hours. Doesn't seem like a lot, but in the, in the big scheme, you know, uh, it, it does work. And this was a, a grassroots effort by the South End. Uh, you know, we had, the public works about it, me, had, had told them, well, you know, we had tried this before in Beacon Hill, Beacon Hill, and that was before the Green Ticket Bill, you know, had teeth in it. So they, they had varying success. The South End was gun ho on it. And again, it's the neighborhood representatives who were saying, let's try something different to reduce the amount of time the trash is out on the sidewalk. So we're, we're trying this pilot program. It starts March 1st. We're going to evaluate in June with those neighborhood representatives and the business, uh, the business folk, and to see how it works. Now, is everybody happy with this? No, they're not. Uh, however, the South End is willing to try something in cooperation with the city and also make no mistake with the Code Enforcement Division because if you don't comply with the new order, you're going to get fined. Now, again, we've done you know neighborhood meetings and flyers and electronic distribution to inform people. So the, the answer to your question is, uh, yeah, I think we could, ta we could tailor something to the north end, but we'd like to see what the results are of this pilot after, you know, after June 1st. Uh, but again, it's, uh, my experience with the north end is that change can be difficult at times, as it can be everywhere else. So it's, uh, you know, this is not something that the city of Boston is going, the public works department is going to the south end, you're going to do this. Uh, this was, you know, it's something really sort of different, but. Uh, Thank you for that. But um, just to go back a little bit on something that you said, which kind of puts a damper on any sort of pilot program or any survey that we've done or anything that we can come to these meetings to say or write about is that, correct me if I'm wrong, but you said earlier, the bottom line of why we have to put our trash out the night before and that we can't have a later pickup 
is because the current company who picks up the trash for the city of Boston cannot accommodate the city of Boston collectively at the same time. That's right. That's, okay. that's not what so, they've been on. Okay. So now, I mean, I don't know how it works with the city, but I own my own business. And if I was not able to accommodate a customer, they would go to another agency. Right? Um, I don't understand that perhaps if the current company is not able to accommodate the whole city at a nine o'clock start pickup, why there aren't other companies allowed, maybe smaller companies for, say, Beacon Hill, which is a smaller area. Larger companies could pick up larger areas, and at least this way, we can all put our garbage out at the same time in the morning for a nine o'clock plus pickup, and the trash would not be on our city streets overnight. Why are we curtailing to one company? It doesn't make any sense to me. It just doesn't make any sense. It's not. There's other. There's other contractors throughout the city, but you can you can rectify the situation. You just have to pay the contract more money, more trucks, more men, more women. You just have to pay. So if everybody wants their trash collected at nine o'clock, you can accommodate that. You just you've just got to expand your trash and recycling budget uh, significantly. Because again, the you know we're we're talking about night collection too, different things along those. Uh, but the the you also you know again. You're not the only neighborhood that's getting picked up on that particular day. Because once they finish with the North End and the Beacon Hills and the Chinatowns, they're going off. They're going into South Boston, they're going into East Boston. So it's not, you know, you can you can you can have everybody get their trash collected at nine o'clock. If you've got a huge line of trucks, uh, it's just not cut you run a business, it's not cost effective. I understand that, but aren't you in the power of negotiating these contracts? Yeah, but again, that, that was a contract that they bid on several years ago and then was extended. So that was several years ago. You can't, you can change the contract. But it's my understanding that the contract is up at the end of this year. 2014. That, that's the point I'm trying to make, is you can change the contract right now if you want to, as long as the city's willing to pay through the nose in order to put that change order in the contract. Because again, if a contractor goes in, he says, I'm going to bid on this document, and then halfway through, the city of Boston goes, oh no, by the way, that, I forget that document. I understand that, but, but let's say that it's not negotiated right now. Let's say that we have to just make whatever we have in place do, and we try to have everybody cooperate. But moving forward, it should be negotiated now for a, a year from now as to what the new contract should should be. I mean, that should be part of the programs. That should be part of the negotiation that, that the public is now made aware that the city is now renegotiating the trash contracts so that this gives the, the city enough time to notify all of the residents that the trash pickup will no longer be nighttime pickups, that, that there'll be no, no garbage on the street at night. This, this gives everybody enough time. These pilot programs are like, they're in, they're out. People are confused. People move from neighborhood to neighborhood. If, if the city is consistent with their rules and regulations and now start to renegotiate with, with the contracts, See, but it makes you, sense. You're using the, the term renegotiation. We're not renegotiating. This is, we're putting a contract out to bid. We're putting it out to bid. So. We're not, we're not negotiating with contracts. And again, the, the, if you think there's a, a room full of contractors that are bidding on this, you're, you're mistaken. I mean, I'm telling you the, to change the, terms. the, the number, again, you, you can do anything you want. You can do anything you want. You can have the whole North End picked up in one hour between nine and 10. You can do it, you gotta pay for it. Yeah. So listen, so let me just say, and no offense to I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not a dental No offense to trash collection. So maybe I have to have words. Let's not say we negotiate. Let's say we put the bid out and this is the new contract. And if, if the terms have now changed, and if you would like to bid on this, bid on this. But we're not going to negotiate now. We're going to put out a bid. Yeah. Bid on this bid on this for next year. Get it down and start educating the, the population immediately for a year from now. And it, what if the, just, what if the contract comes back? And, 
Only two contractors bid on it. So instead of paying $60 million a year for trash collection, the bids come back and it's $120 million. You want 9 o'clock? Because again, there's transfer stations that are involved in this. It's just you don't pick up the trash and then it just goes away. You've got to, you've got to get from the north end. You've got to get to the transfer station. Get empty. Then they have to come back. They've got to go to another room. Yeah. And they've got to go back to the transfer station. They've got to enter that. So it's not like, you know, it's not as simple as, oh, just change it to 9 o'clock. Again, it's, you can do it. It's just, is it going to be fiscally responsible for the city of Boston to enter into it so that everybody's happy? Basic constituent service, it should be fiscally happy. Sorry, I agree. Listen, I agree with you. We had this discussion in my office today. Dave, in regards to put all the trash we had a meeting there, probably like three Six years ago, a little longer, longer where we proposed from the Clean Street Committee to put out trash. I think it was midnight at the time. And this place was jam packed with people in opposition. Believe me, I don't blame you. Why don't we do this? Why don't we do it at five minutes? Why don't, why don't, exactly. why don't we first of all enforce the five o'clock? It's garbage out early. It's a very opportunity. The city employees are still working until five o'clock. So why don't we enforce the five o'clock? Why don't we do this? Instead of making changes to something we're not applying, because we're not taking, we have a bunch of rules already, but we're not following the rules. That was a the common theme in the are not following the rules, yeah, right. the city is not enforcing some of the rules at times, okay? And, you know, we have a problem. It's finding a solution to it. But why don't we say to ourselves, all right, these are the issues we have. I think the garbage bag is a good idea. A particular garbage bag. It has to be put out in that bag. Otherwise, we're going to find out what it is from we'll put it back in your deal all right? I think it's a great idea. Why don't we say to this educate these people, put a sign up on every block that it says the dates so it is not left up to the bad landlord, the absentee landlord, the condominium association who doesn't want to sign in the hallway. It is left up to the city who's providing us with the service. And we start demanding more from the folks who are putting the garbage out. We start demanding more from the folks that are collecting the garbage. And we start thinking that way. So let's work this out one layer at a time. Instead of saying, okay, we're going to dismantle the whole thing, go to something that 9 o'clock in the morning, the traffic in Boston with all the garbage trucks for like 9 o'clock in the morning would be an issue too, I'm sure. Because it does create traffic. Within the neighborhood, you get stuck behind a garbage truck. You may be trapped in a rush hour in the north end for 45 minutes. So why don't we do what we have already in place, which is the most economical thing we have in the situation we're in right now. We don't have too much money. The city is not making our money. Why don't we say, Green gar the, the city garbage guys is a great idea. It's working in other places. We don't have to have a pilot program for enforcement. Why don't we talk about enforcement before 5 o'clock? Okay. Why don't we talk to people about being more responsible and putting their recycling? And why don't we say to ourselves, we have already an issue with people picking through the garbage for the recyclables. We have every night. We have people breaking your garbage bags out and taking things out of the garbage. Why don't we say, nobody's allowed to put recyclables in garbage bags any longer. Put them out in a container. If the guy who comes over to pick them out takes them away for free and recycle them himself, so be it, the neighborhood will be cleaner. Those are things that we can take steps toward doing. Now, to improve the issues that we have and see if that makes it, it becomes a solution. Instead of saying, we're going to change completely, we're going to go to two days a week, which I think is only advantageous to the person who's paying for the service. It reduces what we're getting for our money. So that's an, that's an exchange that, unless you're going to charge us much money, we want the three days. We're paying for three days, we'd like three days. Okay? And let's do the things that we can do to educate the public again. To educate the provider of service, we like better service. I know we have a contract and you know, the contract has to save in the garbage on the street. Okay? And we, we with the help of law, law enforcement, code enforcement, we enforce the four o'clock yeah, the five o'clock. If we can take those steps. To enforce that yeah. because no one's getting actually doing the wrong thing. Exactly. And then and then if we find that six o'clock is better, let's move to six o'clock and let's enforce six o'clock. And once you, you got you have to you have to curb the behavior of all the parties involved. The neighbors, the city, and the, and the service provider. And if we all do that, we'll come up to a solution that's going to be a lot more affordable than, you know. That, that was the theme of the service too, because we need to educate more on when to do it, and we need to enforce more. I mean, you could go through these streets any time before five minutes and find, find a bag out there. Nobody's, nobody's going back and saying, here's your fine, here's your fine. Or bagging that bag after it's been opened, ripped open to financial it days, which we think is a great noble thing. Taking a bag out of his pocket, a green bag, a city bag, a different bag than a collection bag, so that's a ticket again. Tie it up and be ready for pickup. Then you have somebody run around the neighborhood like they do already. Oh, that's a green bag. That one belongs to us. We're going to put it in a barrel. Yeah, Thank they, you. They're not doing that. They're so, not doing so that either. So call you know? on, sure. on a Friday. 
I want it after the trash has already been picked up and some violator put the trash out after the trash has been picked, it sits there until Monday morning. Open. You might get an inspector to come down, they dig through it, they leave the bag open, they take their gloves, they throw them in the street, and they leave the bag there, and the bag is there all weekend long. So, okay, fine. So they came down, they looked through it. I'm not sure who's getting fined. The, the, the blue rubber gloves, but I'm not sure that they're actually enforcing it. The blue rubber gloves, gloves are left there, they don't, and the trash is left there, too. Pick it up, take it with you. They just, I, I, I can't they speak to code enforcement, but what should be happening but is they that don't even come up when, when code enforcement responds is that they're then supposed to be notifying oh. a public works department that, hey, There's you know. been trash in front of 381 here in Elvis Creek. It's been there since Friday morning, and it's there. If, if you go over there, it's there now. Did anyone call? Believe me, I call all the time. I call constantly. They told me at 5 o'clock the office closes. So again, they don't work on Saturday. Forget about Friday inspection. There's no cold offices working on Friday. Saturday they close. Maybe Sunday. I doubt it. The issue is a cooperation from all parties. Cooperation from all parties. And if we don't come up with a solution, we're going to argue about this forever. Not that. I, I, I believe that if we said the next three months we're going to grab the code, we're going to enforce it properly, we're going to have those people are taking people back that gallery. So we give, you have to give the consumer a, somewhat of a satisfactory experience for them to participate in the experience you want them to have. If you don't, the consumer doesn't participate. And that's what we have right now. Dirty streets make for dirtier behavior. Josh. Um, I work very closely with industries in Janice and Janet looks like we try to put trash barrels, more trash barrels on sale in the street. They don't want, they don't want I went personally door to door, knocking on doors. And people don't want the trash barrels. So the street though. They're they're don't they're 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 so they're and they're actually they're we are gonna put some more of those new solar uh, power bellies in the knockdown with the recycling and trash. So we're gonna put some up there, but I can tell you that we went door to door. No, no, sir. Try to get people. But if you knock on my door, I will tell you no, sir, because the garbage barrel, I'm gonna be the guy taking the garbage out. You guys don't pick it up. I mean, we have that for We have one in front of your store. How did it look like all the time, sir? In the middle, the, that one of the I have, I have the only the intersection with the set of lights on Highway like Street, we had a garbage barrel that was always on the phone with garbage. I have so, a big barrel in front of my If you're gonna put a garbage barrel and you're gonna take care of it, they're gonna mention push it. Because it's private, they pick it up yeah. private. Well, the new big ones, they have the new ones right now that's that's city. 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 That's it, 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 it's, a, it's a noble, it's a noble gesture, I think. You know, they are green. People love them. They're green. They got those solar panels on them. Ooh, they look great. You know, they're extremely expensive. Very expensive. Very expensive. Thirty hundred dollars. Huh? They're like thirty eight hundred dollars. Thirty eight hundred, almost four thousand dollars. Have you bought them on the street? Yeah, you no, know, I know you have them out. You know, but again, you know, the yeah, reason why. But you say, you say, Sal, and I respect you very much. But you say, all oh, people don't want us to put the garbage. I wouldn't want to buy them from my my business or any of my homes. I'd rather go out and clean myself because then the city doesn't attend them. No. We have. You have a garbage. No, no, you have a garbage barrel on the street. We've had them. We've seen them. Why not? Tell, listen. Do you think that we will tell you we don't like it because we don't like it? We like anything that will keep our streets cleaner. But anything that we have practiced that doesn't work, and you come up and ask us again, that's what people give you. It's a product you're selling. You need to sell a nice product. If you don't sell a nice product, people don't want to buy it. If they don't want to buy it, they don't want to participate in your program. That's the issue we have. We have 350 people participating in the service. Like, is that a sign of belief in what the city of Boston is doing? Or is that a sign of complete disbelief and disregard? I didn't feel that. You know? And I've seen on this council on a monthly basis. That's the issue. And, and it's not an attack to you guys. It's a, I, don't know, I don't want to take it that way. I, you know, we're friends. I don't have, that's not the issue. The issue is how do we get together to come up with a proper program that serves the community, that improves the quality of life without disrupting life, like towing and ticketing for street sweeping, for example. Okay? And we keep clean and speech. And I think that we would, we would rally more people to help, to be cleaner. We need more, we need more information. We need more, hey, it's a community. People think that this is a museum. They come over to the how, would you, how would you expect us to, to clean the streets without taking any time? 
How do you think we're just going to get everybody's going to move it now with compliance? Uh, no, but I don't think. Listen, I, I'm not. I'm not telling oh, you. So, no, so, no, so I'm not sure I'm not I'm not running the meeting. Oh, sure, sure. I'm not running the meeting. I'm not running the meeting. And you are employing the senior boss to your to align us with your expertise. You so, made your point. No, no, no. I'm making my point. I'm making my point. If you told me the streets are clean because you're shooting them with the machines, I would say, great. Throw everybody's car. But they're not clean. Let's look at this young lady. a couple of faces. I want to let them. Name and address. I feel hard. I'm a homeowner, so I moved into the North Dead in 1977. So I you know, know a lot what's going on with the trash over the first five years. But I agree with Frank. I think that we should have recycling pick up twice a week and trash twice a week. Sunday nights, 80% of what's on the sidewalk is recyclable. Tuesday night, 80% of what is on the sidewalk is recyclable. People buy their toys on the weekends, not only you know, for kids, but adults, their computers. They don't want to keep their boxes and you know their plastic in their apartment until Friday morning. They want to get it out on the street as soon as possible. So that's why you see the trash recyclables out on, on Sunday night and Tuesday. You know, so it, it, another thing is, when people say they don't want to leave their garbage in their apartment, like I have this big thing of recyclables in my kitchen. I keep my garbage in my freezer or in my refrigerator until I put it out on the sidewalk. I'm not going to mix my garbage with my plastics, my cans, my boxes. Well, you know, I'm not going to do that. You know, I think, you know, I'd say about 75% of the people who want free pickups of trash a week don't recyclable. Don't recyclable. You know, don't recycle, I should say. So, I agree. You know, I, I, I would be, personally, a two and two as opposed to three and one. I don't think enough people yeah, recycle if, if people, if people, I know it's not the survey. Like I say, if, 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 if I had, a, I didn't, I, did, I, I filled up the survey and I put two and two, but um, I don't think enough people recycle because you'd be yeah, surprised how much, how much you reduce your rubbish that you put on the street if you recycle. Right. But there's another woman in the, in the back and Hi, Carol Murphy from Street. Um, I want to go on record as saying that two thirds of my um, waste being recyclables, I voted on a survey for uh, two and two, and then also post 9 p.m. Um, I add what you said, I also agree with Frank. I'm new to this meeting, but I'm a resident. As like an outsider, I definitely consider myself an outsider in this meeting, but I can pick up on the politics pretty quickly in the past two hours. The main concerns are we, us, North and residents, want clean streets, and the city has no money. We need to recycle more. It's cheaper for a city to put recycling, to manage a recycling plant than it is to manage a, a landfill. And recycling is a lot cleaner, more clean than garbage. There's not food rubbish. Less rats are attracted to recycling. So I challenge all of you in this in this yeah, residence and city to think outside the box. The main point of this whole thing is there's a lot of garbage in the street. If we reduce and incentivize not producing a lot of garbage, our problem will be solved. What's your name again? Kara Ober. Thank you for coming. We're obedient. Very true. We're obedient. Right? I wish you'd use the gravel more. <laughs> and this is yeah. yeah. obedient. But they get mad when I use it so much. Yeah. Therefore, you're the president. Use it. Stephen. Uh, uh, can I just like, they need swaying 181 Salem Street. This can be tied into the, the buying the bags, too, because the recycling can be free, but you have to pay to get your garbage taken out. Right. So it'll in, in make people recycle more if they do two and two. That's where the bags come in. But I also had a, a question for Frank. I was curious why street sweepers were sent up and down the street around 11 p.m. midnight in the summer. Like, what's the reason for it? The green Which, machine, Frank. Yeah, yeah. The main. Because we're, we're basically trying to throw everything we can at it. Uh, it's called a tenant. It's a smaller sweeper. So we're trying to get, in addition to the posted sweeping, we're trying to get in there to, to get whatever we can at night. They're so, they're so loud. The they're so, the yeah, but it, it, also, it also goes down streets like Salutation and Margaret. And it goes down streets that we typically can't get down during the day. But they drive down the middle of the street. But they have to drive down the middle of the street. But they have to drive down the middle of the street to get to Salutation. They can't drive on the sidewalk. Again, we're, you know, and 
even what we've been trying to do. Yeah, is I know there's nothing. I'm sorry, but I know I know what you're saying, Jan. They they drive down Hanover Street in the middle of the street. There's no, nothing I'm in the middle of the street. street. Yeah, I don't know about the Street. But they go they go. What's wrong with Hanover? <laughs> they go down <laughs> Salutation. They go to Margaret. They go to like um um. What they go down? They get out and they sleep. But at night it's easier. No, I'm asking you. No, but the, the reason they send it out at night also is because in the summertime at at at, at twelve o'clock in the afternoon it's kind of chaotic in the neighborhood. So they say. What do they actually do that truck? It's street. It's a street sweeper, what, but it's a mini street sweeper. What if he drives in the middle of the street? Oh, no, no, street stop and clean no. The no, no, I understand. Yeah, what some I, she's so, saying so, why was on the way going what, somewhere else? To some do some something. streets and are. So they are going down the middle of the street. But there's a number of streets in the north end that only have parking on one side or no parking on either side. They're hitting those also because those aren't posted. They're not posted. You know, no parking, 8 to 12. Why can't they do those in the day? Because they go by quick. Why are you at 12 at night? 1 o'clock. Now, here, here we are. We're giving you additional service. <laughs> you that. No, the not, the one of the reasons they don't come in the middle of the day, especially in the summertime, is because it's really a pain for them to move. I mean, it's, it's a lot of traffic. Yeah, and they do they come, down, right during, down. They do come down during the day, but when you see them driving down the industry, that's really not what their intent. Their intent yeah, isn't to be sweeping on the industry. street. Yes. I, I notice every night the sun, because they hit Salutation Street a couple times a night. Yeah, because they're, they're also, they're not just doing the North End. They're going to Beacon Hill and Chinatown. So, again, it's just an additional thing. We're yeah, trying to get whatever we can. Uh, Dal Dalene, you have a question? Yes, I uh, do. Comment, please. Uh, Dalene, you know, 90s on the street. Um, I thought for a few years now we were supposed to put our trash in green bags. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And two two still, plot. Yeah. Just, just, all right. And so everybody's still doing the CVS bag. So and what would the difference of the color be of the bag? And to me, I see a lot of trash coming out of, um, you know, places like people come out of Mike's Pastry and just throw right. their stuff on the ground, which doesn't have a lot to do with just the tenants themselves putting their trash out. I see a lot of trash in the middle of the street just from people coming from stores where this is where I think the city needs to step in and kind of um, have some type of street. I mean, you have one guy that goes around the whole not then, which is a joke, that he just sits there with his broom and looks at you as he walks by. I mean, there's got to be some money somewhere that we can have a couple of people go around the streets with brooms, start penalizing all of us people that really do put our trash out, put our recycling out, because it's a lot of people that come in from the north end, from other places, and just throw their trash. They throw their gum on the floor. They throw they they there's got to be some, no. And you know what? I understand the big bat bellies are great, but you know what? I'm not touching that handle to open up that barrel. I stick the garbage in my pocket before I open up that garbage. I mean, it's disgusting. There's got to be some way instead of, you know, I'm penalized because I own a car and I have to move my car and I get towed for a street sweeper. So, like, I don't understand why isn't there some type of money, something, that they can put a couple of, there's kids programs. They can't have kids, they have youth programs for the summer. Why can't you have kids streeping, sweeping the streets for us? It, it just, it doesn't make any sense. It's not just the tenants. We have green bags. Now you want to switch to orange bags. Is that going to make well, no, a difference? The, 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 the reason they have this, the reason the bags are orange in Chelsea is because it, it identifies when you put the trash on the street, it, it identifies as this is the this is the bag of the. I understand what you're saying. I it's personally doesn't. Know. The, it's, it's, the, for instance, my building. If we change the rules, everyone in my building would be in compliance. But the kids across the street at 443 Hanover Street, I would bet you dollars to donuts that they would never in a million years put their stuff though. on an orange bag. I totally understood. It's but not the it's just it's it's, it's it's the it's the, the program. It's just the way they designed it with the orange bag. It's a little it's a little thicker than a two ply. Um, so but it's a little bit more expensive more. also, so then again, it's, you know, the people were paying more taxes, we're paying more this, more that, now we're going to pay for more expense, and they are more expensive because I, I know in mall that they do it, you have to buy 10 bags for $10. I mean, you know, they have a certain color bag that they use, so this is what I'm trying to say, and I, I don't know how thick rubber can be, but I, I know rats, they eat fruit. And you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> It's not. It's, 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 it's
I think the Rotom problem in general, though, is a lot better. Than I, 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 100% agree. I, I, I don't have to say I that. It's a, a lot job. better. Without the double ply bag, thank you. Yeah. I think that cold enforcement. I think we need a little bit more cold enforcement. I mean, I had people on Wiggy Street that have taken their trash and put it in front of my door. And you know what I got told? Oh, well, it's 5 o'clock, and um, we really don't have anybody to come down there, but we'll take care of that Monday morning. Yeah, Monday morning. Too. And then the guys that pick up the trash, Sal, I'm sorry, they leave more trash than what they pick up. They really do. They leave, they leave a trail from their truck all the way down the street in the middle of the street with trash. With trash. And, 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 it, and it's compounded. I know some people don't like street sweeping, especially those with vehicles. Um, will park and have to move, but it's compounded when these months, like um, January and February, are the worst because we don't have the mechanical street sweeping. Yeah, and he I know goes you down don't. The side of the street. He doesn't go down the middle of the street. No, no, but I'm saying when we do the street sweeping <laughs> pro, when, this, when you have to move your car for street yeah. sweeping, I think the streets are, are cleaner than this time of year. <laughs> because when capital drops the, the, the rubbish. If it's a street sweeping day the next day, for the most part, they can't get look at the sin. Look at the sin. The city of Boston pays capital to pick up the garbage, and then we have to pay the city of Boston to pick up the garbage, and then we have to pay the city of Boston to pick up the garbage. They make one more comment. I'm going to let Dave ask a question. I just want to highlight a couple of the emerging patterns I saw in the comments for those that left them from the survey. One of them, of course, had to do with what you just brought up. I'm glad you brought that up. The extra trash that doesn't just have to, that doesn't just stem or towards cause from people putting in residents putting out bags of trash. Um, what, if anything, can the city through the DPW do about putting out more trash cans, not necessarily just the big bellies, cheaper ones, regular ones, um, outside of high traffic, high foot traffic areas where people are buying food and walking down the street with the food, which is kind of like what you yeah. alluded to. Um, and that's that's one question. The other one was, is three was as far as you know the trash contract rewriting the terms renegotiating etc cetera, etc cetera, regardless of which trash company you use yeah. is it in any way feasible to require them to say okay you have x amount of guys that are on the truck you obviously are taking a bag from a to b into the truck how about having one of those guys that works that's with the truck cleaning up from behind they, they because of the bags. everyone's talking they about, the bags to everyone's talking about, you know, they, they leave the uh, even more mess. They're not just simply throwing the, the, the bags in. Is that in any way feasible, or is that irrational and just not possible? I just don't know. It's yeah, you can put that in the contract. Is that going to be a cost issue? Is that your guess, like a budget issue? Yeah. Okay. Now again, I, I want to be very clear that it drives me insane when I've repeatedly come to the North End and I continue to hear complaints about capitalized. It drives me insane. I take it to heart, and yet again, tomorrow morning, I'm going to be with Rob DeRosa, the head of our waste reduction, and I'm going to go in and say, I got hammered in the north end again about capital. And again, it's, I, I trust me, I hear it. I hear it, and I'm going to convey it. I'm going to convey it very strongly about, I don't want to go to the north end anymore and have to you know, hear the complaints of the residents who are dealing with this on a regular basis. Now, are there two sides to every story? Absolutely. Because, again, I will point out that the way that the residents of the North End and other neighborhoods put out their trash is leaves a lot to be desired. It's not properly contained. Then you get the trash picker thing and the whole thing. So, they, they, they should be making the attempt to clean that up. There should be a barometer shovel on the truck, and if the, the stuff falls down, Forget about 2014, they should be doing it now. Uh, how much can they clean up? You know, are they ever gonna get to the end of their route? But again, the effort should be made. Do we have enough inspectors to be chasing them around? No, we don't. But again, I gotta be honest with you, it drives me crazy. And I would, would, just like the police with 911, if you see this stuff happening, call 635-4500. Because you say, and I, oh, we didn't get a response. The code enforcement didn't come. But what it does is that this contractor on this street at this approximate time, it, it basically it, it identifies. It gives us a snapshot. It gives us a map of, hey, this guy in this truck is a problem because we keep getting repeated complaints about it. So uh, I hope that answers your question. Do you have one more question? Yeah, but yeah, before you do, I, I, I'm still going to join the meeting. The market practice has to pick up. Thank you all for coming. Yeah. I was going to ask what Darlene said, 90 Salem Street, Marlin Hill. Um, 
one of the things of putting the trash out so early, you it just compounds so many things. You add the trash early, you have people walking out of restaurants and whatever, getting whatever trash and get. They see trash and they're like, I have trash in my hand, there's trash there. So, they put it on top of it. You have trash players that come up, rip open the bags. I don't care how many pie they're gonna be, they're gonna rip open bags at, at 11 o'clock at night. Then you get the trash collectors that are taking those bags, flinging them into their trash can. Guess what happens? Rip bags, falls out trash. They're gonna have it behind. It just compounds. No matter what you do, it just compounds it all. So all of those are contributing to a much, much more trash on our streets. But it's every aspect. And you just, it just. Everybody has to participate. Everybody right. has to but there's, it's just a lot of. I, well, I have to go. But the, the, the one thing, again, is, you know, I've been here for a number of years, and, you know, I'll be happy. Anything that you want to look at that, you know, we can try or, you know, again, the public works department is really important to you on, you know, particularly with looking at the trash contracts. And again, I, I think maybe next time I can bring somebody who's a little more knowledgeable, uh, you know, the, 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 the waste reduction. Well, well, let me just say this, and I got to say, Commissioner, I have, I, I will be meeting with the Commissioner. She really wants to address this issue in all that. What are you looking at? Uh, there, in your survey, some people suggested the containers. So maybe there's a couple of streets in the north end that we can put containers and try it out. They do that in Europe. Mm -hmm. So she's willing to do something. Containers. Yeah, the they, they do. They do. They do. It goes inside. Yeah. 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 The use in Europe is something that she's willing to look at for us in the north I don't know. There's some European that it's in the ground. They build in the ground. They just take it up. I don't know, but we'll have to look at it. So we're willing to do something. And we got your barrel payment. I'm all for that. I'm all for barrels. But if you don't have those, um, the big W barrels. You got both barrels. People just get the household trash. And they dump it. That's a problem. Yeah, they're going to be sagging anyway. And you see it. You see it. And that's why they're right. Be grateful. Healthy as you look. Thank you all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.